good French butter. The way he's like a little birdie, he eats in very small little bites. The little bits get into his perfect little beard. Bite into that with a piece of French ham. Mm. Yeah, but I li actually enjoy vegetables for the most part. I thought you'd never ask. Let's start off with Bobby. The appetizer would start out with a butternut squash puree, some charred kabocha squash, and then some toasted pumpkin seeds. Very vegan and fresh, he loves that kind of stuff. And then some microgreens on top, like a nice toasted grain bowl with like farro and quinoa and brown rice, like a charred maitake mushroom on top, and then maybe like some kind of like a cashew cream, just so that it feels decadent, but it's still really healthy. Bobby likes to eat well, he goes to nice restaurants. Moving on to Karamo, a spread of uh, Welch's branded gummy bears, because that's usually what his breakfast consists of. I think he thinks it's a legitimate food group and has vitamin C, which I'm not sure if it really does. Something as classic American Italian as a chicken Alfredo, and the meal would finish off with a crisp, cold Heineken. A crisp, cold case of Heinekens. We would start out with a croissant, which just came out of the oven, like strawberry marmalade and some really good French sweet butter. And he would slather the butter on and then put the jam and enjoy the croissant and just sort of like peel at it delicately. The way he's like a little birdie, he eats in very small little bites. He likes baked goods. I was about to say a pavlova and a creme anglaise bath, but that's not, that's not good enough for Tan. It would be like a seven layer death by chocolate cake. He's very great British baking show, so it would have to have a component that's kind of like unattainable and like perfect with like little flower petals made out of like a pâte d'amande or something like that. For Jonathan, it would start out with a margarita, heavy on the tequila. I'm trying to think of the largest bowl I could possibly imagine, and it would be a vat of queso. It's gotta be soupy with a massive bag of, I'm making it sound like he would eat all of this and like he's a, a, a pig, but he really isn't because I indulge with this in him, with him all the time, tortilla chips, and just dip tortilla chips into the queso so that the little bits get into his perfect little beard and then I would wipe it off for him and then he would continue and he would have more pieces of it. Dessert from not one, but two restaurants and one of them would probably be something not unlike a pizza crust that's slathered in peanut butter with a bit of a chocolate sauce, maybe something like a Nutella, but mine is the hazelnut so that it's not fancy, so it's basically Hershey's syrup, which is not even real chocolate, but he loves that anyway. And then the second one would probably be ordered from somewhere else, like a Krispy Kreme. And you can have four of them until you realize that you've had four and you feel like death. Great British baking show on the TV, holding our bellies, going like, oh, the perfect last meal or ideal meal for all of my castmates. What would yours be? Hmm. I thought you'd never ask. My last meal, uh, on a pretzel roll, like a, a rare burger, ground beef, really nicely seasoned, Pat Lafrida with American cheese. Like I'm talking the Kraft Singles, the stuff that looks plastic and rubbery, but like three slices of that put on with ketchup, mayo, relish, butter lettuce that's just super soft and delicate because I hate biting into a burger and having like the dry bread when it kind of hits you. It's like such a buzzkill. And then since we're on meat, I would have a perfect, oh, like lamb ribs. You know when you just bite on a rib and the whole thing just kind of slides off and you don't have to gnaw at it with your teeth? I would have that with a potato salad and I would roast the potatoes in duck fat so they have a bit of a funk to them. I want like a perfectly grilled snapper that's just like flaky and delicious with a bit of lemon and a bit of uh, fresh oregano. Now I'm thinking about grease. A bit of like a halloumi or like a kefalotiri or, 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 or like some kind of a baked cucumber, feta for Bobby or Tan because they're both allergic to cucumber. With just like a little bit of lemon juice drizzled over it. Oh. King crab legs, simple, boiled, with lemon butter. When the meat slides right out of that shell and it's a perfect one piece, you feel like you're winning at life and you didn't screw it up. And then you just like shove that whole piece in your mouth and it's like, mm. And then, and then after that I would have, I would have raclette. So I wanna like bake the perfect piece of raclette so that it gets crispy on the sides. I would have it on a nice piece of Balthazar baguette. It's basically an awesome French baguette. And you just bite into that with a piece of French ham, thinly sliced apart. No, no, I love the French, but we're gonna pick the Virginia ham because it's flaky and it's a little sweeter. And that would be like the perfect sandwich. And then finally for dessert, uh, it's a French Canadian thing called pudding chomard. It's basically bread pudding. So you take challah bread or you take brioche if you're being all fancy and just tear it with your hands, make a simple little custard with egg, 
vanilla, throw in maple syrup from my dad's farm in Vermont, pour some dulce leche over it, falling into the little nooks and crannies of the bread pudding, in which I also put, since this is my last meal, I get to decide what I'm having, there would be little nuggets of Nutella in there as well, which would melt, so you have like the chocolate hazelnutty because chocolate and caramel go so well together. And then I would kind of feel like death. Um, I would be close to it at this point. Um, take a bit of like fresh ginger juice, mix it up with a bit of simple syrup, and you freeze it and you take it out and you make a little granny tang. You just take your fork, it's like nails on a chalkboard. And a glass, finally, of nice, cold New York City tap water. There are a lot of things that we're not known for having the best of, tap water is one of them. We have the best tap water in the world, we really do. It's delicious. I didn't name a single vegetable in my whole last meal. Uh, I'm adding one little vegetable that's gonna be kind of like an intermezzo in between everything. It would be baby artichokes that you can get in Rome and you just fry them in olive oil and they get really nice and crispy so you can eat the whole thing with a bit of salt. A fried artichoke is better than any potato chip. Yeah, that would be my meal.